Hey, what's up guys? Razer is a company known for PC gaming hardware, but it's entered the smartphone arena to show mobile gamers who's boss. Is this the phone every gamer should get, or is it just another Android flagship? I'm Will for GSM Arena, and this is our Razer phone review. Razer's debut smartphone has a machined aluminum unibody. It looks sharp with hard lines and squared off corners, a bit different from the curvier phones we've been seeing lately. It's not following the bezel as trend either. The screen is framed by rather large bezels that has a stereo speaker setup. The speaker grills make the phone look a bit waffle-like and are a bit of a dust magnet. But they are THX certified with Dolby Atmos technology. They're seriously loud and put out some really crisp and clear audio. There is no 3.5 mm jack though, so you'll have to live the dongle life if you get this phone. Don't worry, there's a USB Type-C adapter included in the box. Sound output through headphones is loud, but not as impressive as other flagships. You'd think that leaving out the jack would mean that Razer was trying to make the phone more waterproof, but sorry, there's no water resistance on this one. The fingerprint reader is mounted on the side, and it's a physical button, so you'll have to press it down to activate. It's reliable, but not the fastest. There's 64 gigs of storage on board the Razer phone. There's no 128 gigabyte option available. It is expandable though through a micro SD slot. On the back, there is a dual camera setup and an engraved Razer logo. Kinda neat looking. Back to the front and Razer's 5.7 inch IGZO IPS LCD screen. It might be the most unique feature about this phone. It has a native QHD resolution and a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. So what's all the fuss about? This is the world's first 120Hz ultra motion smartphone display. It's about twice the refresh rate of what you get on other phones. And since it's variable, it will keep up perfectly with the frame rate put out by the GPU. The result is that motion on the display looks super smooth. It makes you feel as if there is more processing power preventing any lag. Scrolling on a web page feels delightful and stays sharp, with no blurring or tearing at all. Its effect on gaming performance is complicated though, but more on that in a second. 120Hz sounds great, but there's a downside. It takes a lot of power. The IGZO technology in the display was probably chosen to save energy, but the result is a screen that's not very bright at all. Brightness maxes out at 300 nits, which puts it at the bottom of our list. Contrast isn't on par with other flagships and neither is sunlight legibility, so don't count on a great gaming experience outdoors. Color accuracy is good though. Under the hood is a Snapdragon 835 chipset, standard for most of this year's Android flagships. It does have 8 gigs of RAM, but not sure if it can all be utilized by Android. In benchmarks, it performs near the upper end of this year's Snapdragon 835 devices, and graphics-wise it's on par with the flagship competition with this Adreno 540. It did get hot during testing, but never started to throttle. This heat could become uncomfortable during long gaming sessions. With certain titles, you can just go hands-off with a third-party Bluetooth controller. It really is a shame that Razer isn't offering any such accessories of its own. At least not yet, that is. But now, onto the gaming experience itself. Game Booster offers convenient controls over CPU speeds, resolution, and FPS caps on a per-app basis. Just make sure that the game's resolution matches the system-wide one, or there will be problems. But even if you start tweaking on a per title level, most game engines can't really come close to the 120 FPS mark by design. Arena of Valor is a MOBA title that Razer showcased at the launch event. At native resolution, the game only managed to get as high as 50 FPS on occasion. It's far from the 120 required to saturate the refresh potential of the panel. Lowering resolution didn't increase the frame rate either. Gear.club is a racing game that comes pre-installed on the Razer. We did manage to get higher FPS readings in the 75 range, but again literally no change when we messed with the resolution. But games capable of pumping out 120 FPS do exist. Alto's adventure looks great and really smooth at this high frame rate. Another title we managed to find was Badland 2. Out of all the games we tested, it behaved the most like a PC title. Lowering the resolution actually helped it keep at 120 FPS easily and more comfortably. 120 FPS gaming is great if you can find a title that can do it, but you'll have to take our word for it. You can't see it in a recording unless both the footage and the monitor are also at the same frame rate. The Razer phone has a giant 4000 mAh battery, but unfortunately battery life isn't outstanding. Even with the low max brightness, the high refresh rate panel is really power hungry, so the Razer earns 62 hours in our proprietary tests. Charging the Razer phone, however, is impressively fast thanks to Quick Charge 4 Plus technology. We managed to get this big battery from 0% all the way up to 70% in just half an hour. There is no wireless charging though. The Razer phone runs a surprisingly clean Nova launcher over Android 7.1.1 Nougat. It's pretty blow free with a minimal app package. The UI does allow for a tremendous amount of customization options. You can tweak almost everything, gestures, the app drawer, animations, and even how notifications look. There are also a bunch of cool themes available from Razer through the Themes app, free of charge. Finally, onto the camera. 
Unfortunately, it seems like this part of the phone wasn't a high priority for Razer. It's a 12 megapixel dual camera setup, with one f1.75 wide angle and an f2.6 telephoto, but this doesn't tell you much. The camera interface is pretty bare bones. You get no modes or panoramas, and no filters. There is HDR mode, but it's not automatic. You have to toggle it every single time, and we suggest that you do. The camera's native dynamic range is far from stellar. And the Razer phone really struggles with exposure. Sunlight can cause a lot of problems in the shot. Using the telephoto zoom can be frustrating as well. The phone uses a feature called seamless zoom, where it keeps switching between a telephoto and a crop of the main camera as you zoom in and out. There's no indication of which is which. Needless to say, kind of confusing. It's all pretty much downhill under less than favorable lighting conditions. In low light, even when you're not zooming, everything is pretty underwhelming, especially for a flagship phone. The 8 megapixel selfie cam is okay, but not impressive. The focus is fixed, so shots may come out blurry from time to time. And good lighting is definitely recommended. 4K videos come out really sharp, but not as detail-rich as other flagships. There are still exposure problems sometimes, and no stabilization to speak of. 1080p videos aren't a major step down from 4K, but the exposure still has problems. There is no 60fps mode here either. Razer wanted to deliver a phone that revolves around the gaming experience, and in some ways it has. Performance-wise, it holds up well against other flagships. The stereo speaker setup is really impressive, and the 120Hz display is incredibly smooth. But unfortunately, there aren't that many games out yet that can take advantage of the high refresh rate. And the unique screen is kind of dim and power-hungry, so battery life suffers. The camera on this phone feels sort of like an afterthought, too. While the shortcomings of the Razer phone seem to outweigh the benefits, we are excited that Razer is pushing the boundaries of what's possible on a mobile device. We could be looking at the next big smartphone trend. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video, and you can always stop by gsmarina.com for our full test findings. See ya.